Good. Uh oh. Check, check. Yeah. From Boulder, Colorado. This first song. This first song is off of a comp that we have in the back for sale. It's called Melting Hopeful. It's about. It's about a six-year-old boy who we saw who was crippled and attached to more metal gadgets than you can even imagine. But he still attempted to throw snowballs with his family. He was still laughing. He was still smiling. There's a million people who have their health and take it for granted and neglect it. And they don't do everything possible in their power to have a good time <coughs> or to make a difference. This song is about if a handicapped kid can make a difference and struggle, then you can struggle. Life is a struggle, and without struggle there is no progress. This is called Melting Hopeful. Are the drums supposed to be mic'd, John? Okay. No? Nah. Drums are loud enough. Okay, um, thank you Tim for setting up the show. Oh. It's gonna be on Reservoir Records, it'll be out next month. These two songs are off of it. I'm gonna explain the second song, it's called Strip. I have a father who used to be the Archie Bunker type, very strong, no one can knock him down, very sarcastic, very straightforward, solid. Discovered stress. Didn't know how to handle stress, so I went to a doctor. 
The doctor told him that he had a chemical imbalance. So he prescribed pills. He took pills. He wrote out bills. We lost money. He lost money. He has no independence. He's totally codependent. He can't think for himself. My mom has to basically babysit him, even though he still can function like a regular man. And then he discovered cancer. And cancer on top of all those things, not being able to hold yourself together by yourself. No pills are gonna solve anybody's disease, especially an emotional one that could be talked out. If you have any people that you know are taking depressant drugs, or uppers or downers or what have you, try and help them through therapy with words. Midnight Manhattan. There was a show out here in New Jersey about six months, maybe a year ago. I picked up one of my friends, I took her to a show in New Jersey. We got home at about 12 at night. I dropped off in the Staten Island Ferry Terminal. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Staten Island Ferry Terminal, but it's not one of the safest places to be in the daytime, never mind at night. 
I got in my car, told her to call me when she got home, and I drove off. Five minutes into my ride, I realized I just left one of my friends that I attended in the Staten Island Ferry Terminal. Still went home. Got home, thought about it some more. Was a little upset, but I still stayed home. Tucked myself into my bed and went to sleep. Next morning, I woke up. There's a mess on the machine saying, Brian, I made it. Great. But what if she didn't make it? Would it be her fault? There's a million maniacs in society, and we let everybody go their own separate way independently because we want to give them their own strength. I have friends. I have friends like Mike D and I have friends like Andrew, twice the size of me, and I'll still do whatever I can to make sure they get home safely. You never know what can happen, no matter what someone wants to think, no matter how big they are, there's always someone bigger and more crazy. Escort your friends home and give them a hand make sure they get safely. This song is called The Answer. This song is about compassion. This song is about revolution. This song is about what CR is all about. I work in the outside world. You think you're making a difference in here. You're not. You're just with your own little society and pretending that things are okay. They're not. You walk into the outside world, no one even knows or thinks vegetarian it's cool. And vegetarian, not even talking about eating habits. I'm talking about little hardcore seeds. You can never be able to explain it. So, this song is to provoke you to get your shit together and go out and make a difference. I'm going to give you an instance. There's a place on Long Island where there's kids, about 18 kids have taken, paid the rent of $3,500. Maybe once a month they'll have a rave there. The rave generates money. They were interviewed by Channel 11. They interviewed one of the kids who has main function in there, Artie Philly, and they took everything that he said and either cut it short or turned it around to make it look like he was promoting drugs and promoting a place which was the biggest establishment in the United States for raves and after hours drugs. It's not true. If you listen to what the kid has to say, it's a no drug, no smoking, no fighting, no bouncer at the club. It's for the kids, by the kids. We have flyers back there. If any of you can take it into your own hands to write or call, Tell them it's not true, because we're not part of the outside world, and we never will be.
Thank you. This song is going out to Carrie Bernard, a good friend of mine, I've known for a while. She's moving to Buffalo sometime next week. We'll have a little party for her if you want to come down tonight to Shaolin and celebrate like the Woo. We're chilling. <laughs> this song, as foolish as it may sound, is about seatbelts. There's nothing funny about wearing your seatbelts. There's nothing uncool about it. Call us funny. Our bus outside has safety devices for every passenger. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay, come back. And it's wheelchair accessible. <laughs> <laughs> more important than I love to see you up on stage, friendship. <laughs> Nothing that should be forgotten about friendship. Steamroller and Jim Henson. Jim Henson, a quote taken exactly from Kermit in the Muppet movie when he's in the showdown with Doc Hoffa. Females who were raped, <coughs> mugged, murdered, and left it. Well, I guess that'll make them. <laughs> Turn over. Left for dead. All five men who participated in this heinous act will now face the death penalty. Whether you want to even a pro death penalty song or not, it's a song about spontaneous emotion and how any of you, I hope, would have reacted in the situation by not being able to control yourself to save two innocent lives from the horrors. Are these five beasts? Oh, <clears throat> think what you want. Do it, Do beautiful! Do it! <laughs> Let's go! 
This is a song about the New York City Transit Fair hike. That was unfair to us because the people who vote on it are people who get selfie back and forth the limos and take helicopters any destination they want to at the expense of us through tax. It's not fair. I'm going to try and beat it any way that I can. Tiger Star, the monkeys. This goes out to Hellbender, the hardest working touring band that you've ever seen. They're always on tour, they're always moving. And plus, if you don't like their music, they have the coolest names I've ever heard in a band. Okay, thank you. Tiger. Alright, sometime today. shows into nothing but a prom. about fun. And any time you see that, that hits the red siren. Yeah. And it means... Hey Ben, would you mind holding it? No. Okay. All right, Mike. Give me up the money. This song is called Monster. Mike D is going to take it for you. We've been CR. We have seven inches. We have shirts in the back. I want to thank all the distributors for coming down. It's on records. Make shows more easily accessible for records for us to get. I want to thank John Hubs for doing the show. The Sam team for booking the show. I want to thank all of you, especially all of you, for sticking around and watching what we have to say and supporting us. It really means more than you can ever imagine to me. This band is my life, and I love you for being a part of it. Mike, take master, please. Before I tell you what this song is about, I'm going to tell you something about how one person one time said, I've heard so many good things about your band. One time, hello, am I interrupting something? Yeah, I didn't think so. Hardcore. So anyway, they said, oh, I heard something that along the lines that you talk too much in between your songs. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was hardcore. I thought this was punk rock. I thought it was about communication. I thought it was about letting people know what we're saying, letting people know what we're talking about, whether you agree with us or not. Um, we don't care, because we're going to keep saying what we want to say. We're going to keep saying what we have to say. We want people 
if they disagree, instead of writing a letter to a fancy and blah, 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 you know what they say, how can you support them, blah, 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 to come to us because despite, well, Brian's got a pretty nice tenure about him. Sure. I always come off as an asshole because I probably am. But uh, we're actually really nice guys and if you have something to say to us, about us, about what we say, about what we do, you can talk to us about it. That's all I have to say about that. This song is called Monster. It's about no child in particular. It's about the sexual abuse of any child because the sexual abuse of a child is the most heinous crime that could ever be committed. These children can only look upon the people who are committing these sexual acts as monsters. Hello, as monsters! Jesus fucking Christ. This song's for the children of the world because they're our future. Fuck you. Thank you very much for your support, Rudy Fiora.